Okay, here we're going to look at animal phylum and key transitions that occur, allowing us to de determine which animals are more primitive and which ones are more advanced in certain features. So when we're looking at these transitions, we're looking at transitions in the body plan. And they're marked by these six key points. And I'm going to go over each of these in detail, but here's the basic overview. We have presence or absence of tissues, bilateral symmetry, a presence of a body cavity, segmentation, if the organism molts, and deuterosome development. So starting first here, tissues is the first key transition in the animal body plan. Only parazoa, the sponges, lack defined tissues and organs. All other animals have tissues. So this lack of this kind of defined tissue here is a key way to identify a sponge. These animals exist as aggregates of cells with minimal intercellular coordination. This means it's kind of exist as aggregates of cells. We, it's composed of cells, but aggregates just simply means a collection of cells. Yes, they're organized to some degree, but there's minimal intercellular coordination, meaning there's minimal specialization within all the cells. They're each kind of all performing the same function. They're not getting very specialized, and this is key in the sea sponge. Further um, examples here. Ooh. We have bilateral symmetry. What does this mean? Well, here's our sponge, and we can see there's no real symmetry there. Um, we have something called radial symmetry. Now, virtually all animals, other than sponges, have a defined symmetry of some kind. Radial here is the body plan in which all parts of the body are arranged around a central axis. Any plane passing through the central axis divides the organism in halves, approximating a mirror image. And this is radial. We can just start forming all these radii. Bilateral symmetry, on the other hand, is this one distinctive plane of symmetry. The body plan with distinctive right and left halves are mirror images. This plan, the bilateral symmetry, allows for special, specialization among body regions and more efficient movement. So looking at just the symmetry, bilateral symmetry would say be more advanced animals than radial symmetry. Try to put that into a little bit of a picture here, as you can see. Animal ancestor, asymmetry, the sponges, very basic. Radial symmetry are Nidarians, and then all of these bilateral symmetry um, examples of animals have distinct right and left halves, more efficient movement, and considered more advanced. The third key, that body cavity, is an important step in animal evolution. Internal space allowed for the support of organs, dis distribution of materials, and coordination and of development. I just chose a picture of the human here, because we're going to go over some um, body systems. Uh, but again, this does not only pertain to humans. You can probably think of us as having a cranial cavity, thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity, pelvic cavity. Uh, this is just one example of development of body cavities being a key step in animal evolution. Continuing there, segmentations, subdivisions of body, which is a key transition into the animal body plan. So each segment can develop more or less complete set of adult organ systems and can be used for moving around. So the more segments an animal has, we see here, can allow potentially for more specialization, more efficient movement. And this is what we're considering to be an advancement in the development of the body plan versus something that's just kind of very basic here, more segments, the chance for more specialization. Uh, this is kind of a cool image here. Molting, uh, the shedding process that allows for new growth to occur. This is cicada. Here in the Northeast, you may hear them in the uh, summertime that make that really loud sound, typically in a nice warm uh, late July or August day. Molting, though, is common not only for our cicada, but for snakes and crabs and scorpions. They also participate in this molting process. I have some great top molting animals link if you want to view that for snakes, crabs, and scorpions. Kind of a cool there. Okay. Uh, the most complicated one here, deuterosome development. So what, what is this? Uh, a mouth developed separately from the blastopore. So in this diagram, showing the difference of two major coelomates based on the basic pattern of development. So we have our protosomes and our deuterosomes. Protosomes are more primitive. They include flatworms, nematodes, mollusks, annelids, um, and they're very basic. Deuterosomes uh, have evolved from protosomes more than 630 million years ago. Now, initially, we're going to look at and see some similarities, but there's some key differences here. In the deuterosomes, is located down here, the blastula is called the radial cleavage. 
when we talk about cleavage here being splitting or dividing of cells, because it occurs parallel or perpendicular to the major polar axis. We also see in our duosterms the development here of a digestive tube, not really present here in the protosomes. Again, protosomes think more primitive. In protosomes, cleavage are called, as we see here, spiral, because division planes are oriented have an ob oblique way to the polar major axis. So we're seeing initially this kind of eight cell stage here, radial cleavage or radial dividing of cells versus our spiral dividing of cells here. See development of different organizations during gastrulation, and our deuterostomes are more developed here because we have that development of a digestive tube. So that word cleavage, again, that may not be the first thing you may think of, but division or split is how it's going to be referred to here in science. The process by which a zygote divides by mitosis to form new cells. So here our zygote goes through cleavage to form our eight cell stage, more cleavage, more dividing of those cells, more cytokinesis, if you will, and we see more and more dense cells packed in here. During embryonic development, the zygote undergoes a series of mitotic divisions or cleavages from an eight cell stage and then allows a hollow blastula. During the process called gastrulation, the blastula forms inward and forms a cavity. Again, and this is showing or indicating more specialization. Last slide here, looking at major amylophyllum, the diagram below shows the body plans for nine major phylum of animal. Remember, each can be traced back to a common animal ancestor, and we see them dividing out here, each with different um, complexities and each with different uh, individuals that represent them. I should have uh, videos, you can find those on the YouTube channel that should describe each of these in a little bit more detail.